Yes, today we will uh, next uh, discussion is on the materials used in the solar concentrator uh, collectors. So here coming to the different various parts. So earlier also we discussed with definitions, which are the various parts of a uh, concentrating collector. So just to recall, we have main important part is the reflector. Okay, reflector is a surface which uh, reflects the solar radiations. And with the help of that reflected radiation, we are going to utilize it for different applications. So that is one is the reflecting surface. Another is the absorber material, which has to absorb that radiation for the required application. So that application in the sense, it may be using for sensible heating without any phase change from liquid to solid or solid to liquid or gas to liquid or uh, liquid to solids different ways. So it can absorb the heat. So in that case, Applications we have sensible heat for the latent heat or for the, the thermochemical reactions in chemical industries. So various applications will be there for the thermal uh, heating. So in that absorber material is very important. The next parts were the cover of the absorber and the coating required for the absorber plate or the absorber uh, tubings. Then we have different types of uh, fluids which are uh, flowing in the different types of uh, collectors like liquid flatbed collector we had discussed about water uh, air heating systems where air is going to pass or gas heating systems where different uh, uh, gases will be flowing and if you come to the solar concentrators so concentrators may be used for uh, higher temperature applications also these are used for the power plants where uh, we are going to convert one form of fluid like uh, liquid to vapor then we are going to run that in uh, different forms of uh, energy conversion devices. So like this, we have to choose which type of fluid is used or required for uh, conversion of that absorber heat into different uh, forms of fluids. So for that, fluid is also very important to choose. Okay. So these are the different parts and materials used for these uh, surfaces. Coming to the first one, reflecting surfaces. So whenever a reflecting term comes into mind, we can uh, imagine the glass or the reflecting uh, glasses. Uh, many times uh, these glasses, in place of glasses, we can go for metallic, metallic or plastic uh, films and polished aluminum surfaces. So these are also having very good uh, reflecting abilities. Uh, coming to the importance of glass, we have various types of glasses. So as listed here, you can see one is the solar uh, soda line glass, or which is made by lead alkali or borosilicate glasses, and we also have aluminum silicate. So many silicate or the alkali glasses are available. In this, the glasses have very good reflectivity. We can compare the reflectivity of glasses with metals. The glasses have 95 percent reflectivity with uh, the coating at the backside surface. And front side, it is going to reflect the image or reflect the light. And based on that reflectivity parameter, it is having at highest uh, reflectivity compared to other materials. And coming to the aluminum surfaces, polished aluminum surfaces, if you see, the reflectivity range is up to 85%, from 80 to 85%, so which is a little bit lesser than the glass. So comparatively, all these materials, glasses, you can use. Also, comparing to the glasses and the cleaning of the glasses or uh, cost of the preparation of such type of glasses with 95% reflectivity is also a difficult job as well as uh, cost effective. So in such cases, many people will go with aluminum reflecting surfaces with uh, easy maintenance and uh, very low cost application. Then, <coughs> also we can go for the silver coating at the other surface of the glass, so which will improve the reflectivity range. But silver is having a higher cost. Again, on this also we can discuss whether the silver coating can be done or other coatings like normal mirrors. What you can see on that backside, what will be the reflecting the coating? So, according to requirements, we can think about the coatings at the other side of the glasses. So these reflecting surfaces used for also Fresnel lenses, okay, so which are made of glass or plastic, 
if the fresnel lens is made of plastic it may be having polymethyl methacrylate material and also because of this plastic materials the advantage is even glass also it is uh, both are having antioxidant in nature or uh, resistance to oxidation so this will help us to improve the life of uh, reflecting surfaces okay because solar collectors if you see it is not having a life of uh, 5 or 10 years it may be having minimum of 20 years and the life can be improved uh, depending upon the materials used also it should be anti corrosive or anti oxidant in nature next type of uh, material is very important is absorber material so we have more cost for both these reflecting and absorbing surfaces so in the absorbing surfaces in the numericals also we have discussed uh, where we are using some steel material aluminum copper okay or the materials which are having very good thermal properties or the very good uh, heat carrying capacity or uh, conductive property so based on that these are the three important materials used for uh, absorber material you can remember like steel aluminum or copper uh, it should also have mod good modulus of elasticity at higher temperatures or lower temperatures it should be stable in nature also then yield strength so at very high temperatures at very high pressure because we cannot talk only about the temperature always we should also think about the pressures at which pressure uh, it should withstand so as the temperature of any fluid goes on increasing in the absorber the pressure also goes on increasing both are uh, proportionately or related each other or directly proportional so in such cases because of this pressure what happens that other than thermal stresses the mechanical or the loading stresses will be high so in such cases the modulus elasticity or the yield strength should be high for the given materials next it should be having ease of fabrication because we should prepare a structure that structure should support the reflecting surfaces as well as absorbing surfaces and also for a given length of life it should also support the alignment the alignment between absorber and the reflecting surfaces so for that the fabrication should be easy for us and also uh, making a structure for supporting this reflecting surfaces as well as uh, absorber material should be easy and also it should be anti corrosive so whatever the outer surface or the inner surface which is in contact with fluid say for example now absorber surface if i consider inside that absorber container or the tank it, it will contain some fluid and that fluid may be chemically reactive or it may be stable depends on the fluid and material reaction so in such cases it should be anti oxidant or anti corrosive so for a given length of time it should not corrode or it should not react with the atmosphere also the outer surface if you see it is continuously in atmospheric conditions like rainy season or summer season in such cases it should not corrode or erode on the surfaces so such type of materials you can go for absorbing material and also all these materials should be with a given optimization of cost so economically it should be viable for the customer so many times if you see if you are going for the aluminum for a very low cost or a steel we can go for low cost application uh, in other cases like glass reflectors and copper absorber we can uh, have very high cost effective in nature next you can see always there will be a cover for a absorber material like in uh, flat plate collector we have seen glass covers or in uh, compound parabolic uh, reflector we have seen the glass tube inside which there is a metal tube and that metal tube is a absorber tube so that covers can be used as a glass or a made up of plastic okay and also you can recall here the transmissivity and the reflectivity or the absorptivity so here for the glass or plastic material the absorptivity should be high sorry absorptivity should be less because it should be transparent in nature it should transfer the given wavelength of radiations in a given wavelength range and also it should transmit highest value of uh, light or the 
वैल्यू ऑफ दिट्यूशन शुड बी वेरी हाई नियर टू वन और हंड्रेड परसेंट नियर टू हंड्रेड परसेंट इट शुड ट्रांसमिट रेडिएशन फ्रॉम रिफ्लेक्टर टू एब्जॉर्बर प्लेट बट इन रिवर्स वे इन द रिवर्स वे इफ यू सी एब्जॉर्बर प्लेट और द एब्जॉर्बर ट्यूब वन सिटी इज हिटेड अप द लॉस ऑफ द एब्जॉर्बर ट्यूब और द लॉस ऑफ हीट शुड बी वेरी लेस so in such cases it should uh, have a very less uh, losses it should uh, maintain the proper wavelength inside the cover and also the radiative or convective losses should be reduced when the heat is transferring from the absorber plate to the outside with higher wavelengths or different wavelengths so for that wavelength it should be having very less transmissivity and absorptivity okay so these uh, parameters you have to take care while selecting the absorber cover materials the next is absorber surface coating so this also we have discussed in depth in liquid flat plate collectors the selective surfaces for the selective coating so many materials we have discussed in the in a liquid flat plate collector same materials also holds good in concentrated collectors also it should have higher absorptivity of coating okay and also it should also increase or it should have more a uh, heat gain so for that purpose we have to go for different coating of the absorber plates even we can directly go for the black coating for the selective coating with different materials or we can go for the paints uh, fused vitreous and porcelain materials the porcelain elements of the coating we can have so that it can have maximum absorptivity with very less reflectivity okay because absorber should not absorb the energy and also reflect back it should have very less reflectivity in the same case it should have maximum absorption of the radiations next coming to the last part because here we are focusing only on the absorber and reflectors because these are the two main entities which are responsible for uh, absorbing maximum solar energy that's why uh, we are thinking only about the reflector surfaces material and absorber material and the coating materials rest all part if you see in the solar structures the only the fabrication or the structure is prepared and on that structure we are going to fix these materials now coming to the fluids which are carrying the heat so here in this uh, section as i told the fluid should be very less chemically reactive with the absorber surface it's not not that you cannot go for the chemically reactive liquids uh, in different cases the absorber material should be very less reactive to the given fluid so depending upon the fluid we have to choose the absorber material also if it is very high in chemically reactive in such cases the absorber should be neutral to that fluids okay so and also it should have the fluid should have very high operating range of temperatures and pressures then only the absorber material or the absorber container can withstand the given pressures or uh, temperatures also the fluid will be stable in that case the reactions will be very less between the absorber and fluid and also it should be non corrosive again the fluid should be non corrosive and also it should have very low pressure uh, vapor pressure such that the absorber container will not be affected so in that case many oils can be used or water at high pressures can be used or for air heaters you can go for air or gas heating systems so depending upon different applications we need to think about the materials for absorber and reflecting surfaces or also coatings it is not that always we have to fix the materials then we have to use any different fluids it's not like that so first depends on the application for which application what type of solar thermal application is required like concentrating collectors in that concentrating collectors we have again various types of uh, concentrating collectors like parabolic cylindrical or paraboloid dish or flat plate collector with reflectors okay so based on these applications we have to choose which type of solar collector should be situated with given uh, structure then we can think about on which type of fluids which are used inside the absorber on that basis we can choose the different materials for the absorber and reflective surfaces okay so this is about solar concentrator collectors materials now next we'll take one 
numerical on this uh, concentrated collectors just to understand uh, how to find out this different parameters okay so here i have taken one example i will uh, solve this problem so that you can understand uh, how to go with uh, concentrating collectors and solving the problems so here actually i have taken one general case as i told you earlier the general equation for a any concentrating collector is useful heat gain in the absorber can be found out using this equation area of the absorber into any losses if you have given and into bracket the solar radiation total solar radiation falling on the absorber that is s value and it, it also depends on the efficiency if efficiency is less then losses will be more so that also we need to consider with the solar insulation minus now heat loss so heat loss can be considered with overall loss coefficient divided by concentration ratio that is ul by c into bracket difference of temperature of absorber plate and ambient temperature so keeping this in mind we'll uh, look into this problem how to go with this problem first we'll see the given data so in this problem a parabolic concentrating collector is used so parabolic concentrating collector so in the side view if you see i can draw a shape like this okay so cylindrical means it is having some length and in the side view it is having some parabolic shape here like this which is shown as a fixed surface or a reflector so this is the parabolic concentrator and at the center to be shown because it is having a cylindrical shape so, so it is not a point focusing it is a line focusing so on to be shown as a receiver so this is used to heat a thermo oil so oil is flowing inside this tube so to heat this oil parabolic concentrating collector is used okay as a power plant for a power plant taking the following data like after using this given data we need to determine the exit temperature of oil so whatever the oil is flowing inside this inlet temperature and outlet temperature we need to find out of this oil when its inlet temperature is 280 degree centigrade okay so by this only we can understand by using this difference of temperature one can find out what is the exit temperature so whatever the equations relate the difference of temperatures we can use that equations so the given data is solar incident radiation or the solar beam intensity is that is s value or you can say uh, beam radiations total beam radiations ib 750 watt per meter square is given here so this i can correlate with this equation that is s is given 750 watt per meter square okay next is aperture area of the collector so whenever this aperture area is given then we can relate with the concentration ratio because concentration ratio is what aperture area divided by receiver area so for that purpose maybe they have given aperture area of the collector also the solar incident radiation will be falling on this aperture area so total radiation received on the aperture and if the absorber area is given we can find out solar radiation falling on the absorber plate so that collector or aperture area is 240 meter square is given so 240 meter square means if it is circular that will be 5 by 4 d square 240 meter square or else if it is a cylindrical shape it will be having some length and width So length and width, if you multiply, the area will be 240 meters square. So depending upon shape, that's why I have taken one general problem, where only area is given. They have not told any like circular or it is a triangle or a rectangle. We don't know. Then concentration ratio. So C is given 40. Concentration ratio is area open to the solar radiations. That area, plane of this collector, to the absorber area. for this over area is 40 mass flow rate of oil inside this tube mass flow rate of oil is 36 kg per minute so per minute 36 kg of oil is flowing and its cp value is 3.2 kJ per kg oil cp value now you can just understand the equation which relates the heat carried away by oil that is mcp then here delta t 
So like this one imagination will come into picture. Okay, the equation which relates the heat gain by fluid using mass flow rate Cp and two different temperatures means Mcp delta T also I can use. Next is ambient temperature is also given. So that is nothing but Ta. 30 degree centigrade is given. Next is overall loss coefficient is also given. That we can say it as UL, total heat loss coefficient. 8 watt per meter square degree centigrade. So this is due to radiation, convection or conduction. All together, overall loss coefficient is 8 watt per meter square degree centigrade is given. Then heat removal factor is given. So as I told, if the efficiency or heat removal factors are given, you have to multiply with the given equations or the parameters. So heat removal factor is around 0.96. Means the total heat will not be used for the heating the soil. So around 4% of the heat is lost because of the heat removal factor. That should be taken care. Then optical efficiency. So efficiency of this collector entire system is nothing but the optical efficiency. So that is 75%. So this 0.75 we can multiply with the total solar radiation out of which 750 due to this 25% loss how much solar radiation is received on the collector. So that can be converted. Then we have the tilt factor. So tilt factor is not making much difference. It is 1. Okay. So even though if you consider a tilt factor, but in the equations it is no, uh, not having any usefulness. So tilt factor is 1. So there is no tilting is done for this uh, reflector. So now coming to the analysis of this problem, finally what you have to do is here heat carrying capacity, mass flow rate of the oil or temperature of inlet and outlet, some uh, values are given here. And other than this, total heat gain by the absorber. Okay, as I told you, for that equation, they have given area of the collector, they have given uh, total solar incident radiation, uh, overall loss coefficient, concentration ratio they have given, then efficiency and FR value, all these things are given. So, coming to the solution, as I told, the useful heat gain. To the absorber, if I see, we know that area of the collector or the area of the plate or the reflector surface into FR is taken because this is the heat removal factor. Heat removal factor because there are 4% losses are there. 4% losses due to this uh, absorber plate. So that 4% is considered for that area of the collector. And into bracket you can see the to total insulation or the solar radiation which is falling on the surface or the collector is with optical efficiency. How much is optical efficiency? 75%. So due to which what will happen? 25% losses will be there. So solar radiation, 100% solar radiations are not falling on the absorber plate. The meaning is 25% losses are considered. So to consider that, 750 watt per square is the total solar radiation into this efficiency value you have to multiply. Then only what will happen? The effective solar radiation which are reflected back from the surface will be this value. 750 into 0.75. Then minus. So this is the heat or the radiation falling on the surface. So heat lost for the given area and the FR value, that is FR into AP into UL. UL is given 8. Yes, how much is the given value? 8 watt per meter square degree centigrade. Okay, so that is UL value. Concentration ratio is 40. That is also given. Then difference of temperature. So as in the main equation, if you see this main general equation, temperature difference, what you have to consider? The plate temperature and the absorber temperature, sorry, ambient temperature, Ta. So plate temperature and ambient temperature, this you are considering for flat rate collector, air heaters, concentrating collectors, all types of collectors, this difference of temperature will be same. So coming back to this, now you have to take for plate temperature. So plate temperature is nothing but here we have assumed the absorber plate itself is transferring the heat to the liquid. 
you can consider the inlet temperature itself as the plate temperature or plate mean temperature. So that they have to 80 degree centigrade minus ambient temperature. How much is ambient or atmospheric temperature? 30 degree centigrade in this zone. So that they have taken 30 degree centigrade. Now we will get what is the total heat gained by the fluid. So that total heat gained by the fluid with heat removal factor and losses. Okay, with these all losses, it is around 1,18,080 watts. To keep the temperature in degree centigrade, this should be in watt per meter square or watt per meters. And area should be in meter square. And concentration ratio don't have any unit. And solar radiation should be watt per meter square. So all these values are in proper units. So answer will be 1,18,080 watts. So one of you can check with the calculator whether this answer is coming in this range. Any difference in the value? Or can remember like this. See, total heat given to the liquid, if you say, with the heat removal factor loss and uh, efficiency losses, I can write it as 0 0.96 into 240 into 750 into 0.75, which is the heat supplied to the liquid. Then losses, losses you can take minus, minus of 0 0.96 into 240 into 8 by 40 into bracket 280 minus 30. Total heat supplied minus heat loss. Okay, next step is, as I told, in the problem they have mentioned the mass flow rate, CP value of the liquid, okay, and inlet temperature of the fluid like this. So in the first first step itself, I can write it as Q equal to M C P delta T, like a heat transfer subject. If I write Q equal to M C P delta T, in that equation we have outlet temperature as unknown, that is exit temperature as unknown, also this Q as unknown. Okay, so to find out that unknown Q value, later you can go as a second step. To find this QV by solar collector, then you can substitute that QV value. Okay, so like that also it can be done. Or else you find out QV value first, then using this QV and heat balance means the heat available in the absorber or to the fluid is equal to this MCP delta T heat carried away by the liquid means supplied heat gained heat. If you equate, then easily I can find out the outlet temperature. That is nothing but MCP T0 minus Ti. So in this case, I will take again QV value 1,18,080 watts equal to mass flow rate is given. See here, mass flow rate is given in minutes, kg per minute, but we always need in kg per second. So to make it in seconds, 36 plus 60 is taken here into CP value. So CP value is what they have given 3.2 kg per uh, kilojoules per kg. So kilo you have to consider. So once it is given in kilo, always you have to multiply with 1000. Then it will be in 3200 joules per kg. Okay, so kg we are not changing. Kilojoules we are changing into joules. So that is 3.2 into 1000 will be 3200 is CP value of the given oil into bracket T0 minus inlet temperature of the oil. Inlet temperature of oil is how much? 280 degrees centigrade. Okay. So that value is considered here. Now substitute and get this outlet temperature of the liquid. So please check the answers and tell me whether they are matching with the given answers here. Here, outlet temperature, they are telling 341.5 degrees centigrade. Is it correct? 
So take one minute time and find out. Yes, any reply? Have yeah, understood the problem? So in, uh, uh, I think if you refer the Sukhatme book or Gijirai book, they have given the very good examples. But the problem is, the given data is around one or two pages. Okay, in one or two pages they have given the question itself. Such question they have printed in one or two pages. And solution, in that solution what they have done, other than this finding the outlet temperature or uh, the heat gain, and they have extended for finding different parameters. So in one question itself they are asking, around uh, six to seven parameters okay so in the books they have solved around four to five pages if you refer the problems and also i feel in the asking in the exam or test and typing the questions for two, two two pages is very difficult or even though if you answer the questions the for marks carrying for the IA test is very difficult for uh, six marks or ten marks even at least those those questions should be asked for 20 marks total Maybe in exam we can ask, but uh, making the question paper or the answers and uh, covering the 20 marks for a given time is very difficult. So that's why you can take those examples in a part by part, like this finding only heat gain and out outlet uh, temperature. Or you can go for finding the CP value of the oil. The same problem what I can do, I can give, find out or determine the CP value of oil. In that case, what I'll do, I'll give remaining values, like outlet temperature of oil I'll give. Then you can easily find out the CPU value of oil. And depending upon that CPU of oil, you can also tell uh, which oil can be used for that application. Okay, that all depends. So the same example, I can go for finding other uh, parameters also. Like I can tell you, uh, using this heat uh, loss, find the radiative heat loss or uh, convective heat loss. Okay. Depending upon that. Yes. Now I think uh, this is this is the end of unit three or module three. I think we'll stop the class at this moment today because uh, we'll not start the fourth module. So if any doubts are there up to this third module, okay, so please come with the doubts in the next class. So once we clear those doubts from module one, two, three, then we'll start with the module four. Okay. So from module 4, it is uh, having uh, thermal storage devices, then uh, PV system is completely different from uh, solar collectors. And then in the last topic, uh, fifth module, we have economics. Okay. So these remaining two chapters are completely different from this uh, solar collectors, so solar geometry and uh, introduction to this solar energy. Okay. I'll stop the class here. Next class will go to the third module, which is completely different.